gentlemen, today we are going to be talking about the cloud service appliance and some best tricks uh, to help you with improving traffic uh, and optimizing that traffic. Now, my name is Marco Velos. I'm the product support engineer over the cloud CSA. And some of the topics we'll be discussing are going to be uh, increasing the connections, uh, making sure that the logs are properly rolling so that they don't fill up your OS, and handling remote control communication with those items. And lastly, talking about the physical CSA and its difference with the virtual CSA. So let's get started with the allowed connections or basically the overall connections. What are the connections with the CSA? In the status page, you'll see that there's a total connection, the total requests and other failed authentications. Um, these are different types of requests that you'll see with the CSA that are coming in from the off network devices. This can be remote control. Uh, this can be your proxy host doing vol scan or uh, doing some uh, SD client stuff. So it just depends on what's communicating and what's going through the CSA. Now, the current connections are exactly what that means. It's coming through. The total connections is the total connections that have been happening since the last reboot of the CSA. Uh, but the most important ones you want to really focus are is current and connections waiting. Connections waiting are the ones that are currently sitting on the CSA waiting to be linked up, but have no bridge connection to the CS or to the core. So, for example, five connections means that there is five devices out there waiting to be remote controlled, but don't have uh, any sessions that are being remote controlled currently. Uh, the current sessions are going to be things like proxy host, SD client, uh, other things that are communicating or even remote control as well but uh, they are actual active connections that are bridged between the client and the core. Some of uh, the more higher demand items are gonna be your remote control because they're always gonna be available. But the same machine could be doing a vol scan while you're remote controlling. Maybe you're tr troubleshooting that remote control or excuse me, that vol scan. So the best thing to check for is to make sure that uh, these total connections are working and they're fine. Now there is a setting in the CSA to modify these connections. And you can see it here with the maximum connections uh, and mine is set to 8,000. Now 8,000 is the limit the CSA can handle. By default, you will see it at set to 2,000. It can go up to 8,000 to able to handle a lot more devices. As I mentioned before though, one device can have more than one connection. So on average, we'd like to say about 3,500 to 4,000 devices per CSA to be handled your daily needs. Now, if you don't use remote control, obviously that goes up. If uh, you guys aren't using, gonna, you're not gonna be using patching or software distribution that heavily, again, that number can go up. So try not to focus too much on the number that you're gonna be using. Try to watch how your connections are doing for a small period of time during this uh, time that you're having with increased traffic to your CSA. Whether that's, hey, the VPN's down, your office is being migrated, whatever the case is, the increased traffic can be seen and modified if you need to, to uh, allow certain connections to limit it or increase it. That is connections probably in a nutshell. Let's move on to the logs themselves. Now, the logs can get filled up. And when I say logs, the main log is gonna be the messages log. We do have a documentation on this already that covers how to make sure that the log is rolling, that it uh, is not filling up your root volume, because if the uh, disk is filled, then you won't be able to access the web server. The console itself will be filled up. Uh, it won't be able to modify or make any changes to any files. So it won't obviously let you access the, the information. So you have to basically reboot it, try to get in there as quickly as possible and delete the messages log. But there is a method to be able to make sure that it is rolling, that it is being truncated, and uh, that way your logs aren't being filled up. Uh, so we have that documented under the issue logs filled up CSA, which gets updated um, if there is ever need. For now, it's fairly straightforward because this is Linux commands. So I'm not going to go over it too much into detail, but give you a heads up that if there is a log, whether it is the messages log or another type of log that's uh, uh, in the CSA, sometimes the kernel.log, uh, either case, all those logs can be rolled and truncated um, by using this method. And now let's cover the remote control process. Uh, one of the more important things that you'll see is the legacy remote control switching back and forth between direct mode and gateway mode. Now, I'm not gonna be covering the WebSocket remote control because that is very different 
uh, communication and connections from the original CSA web service that you can modify that we kind of discussed on the connections. Uh, it uses its own type of connections and is separate. So uh, you don't need to worry about that. Now, with the legacy stuff with HTML or legacy remote control, you will see that uh, if you're set into direct mode right now, I'm on the VPN. So I'm set to direct mode. I can talk to the core directly. If, uh, if you're not, if you're off network, then it should automatically switch. Now, sometimes it takes some time. Uh, there is an IP address uh, basically that checks to see if there's a, been a change to it, if you're on a subnet, and it's monitoring that. And if it doesn't find it, if it doesn't check or it doesn't uh, see the difference, then it won't switch. And sometimes, rarely, but sometimes you have to switch the mode. And by switching the mode, it allows you to be able to be off network. Now, that makes the, uh, the service go away, uh, the box disappears, and now it's part of your uh, icon tray. And I go into, I don't see my icon tray, but I can go into my icon tray and pull it back. Now that I'm saying that I'm in gateway mode, it's not connected. It's trying to go to the CSA, but uh, the problem is that since I am on the VPN, it's trying to hit it internally and it's not gonna work. But it is trying to do it, and it's trying to force that CSA, as you can see, and we're currently in gateway mode. So sometimes that is uh, needed and useful to be able to switch back and forth for um, VPN issues or problems with it um, so that you can let the end user make that switch if it's needed. Now, lastly, let's talk about the physical CSA and the virtual CSA. When it comes to the virtual CSA, you can modify the VM. Um, you can change its RAM and CPUs. You can change what you need for it to happen. But with the physical CSA, that's not very easy. You have an RMA that you might need to do. You might have to physically change or add hardware. Um, so it's, it gets a little bit more difficult and ordering the USBs sometimes can be a lot more difficult. So uh, sometimes we suggest doing the virtual VM. It's honestly your best bet. It's, uh, it gives you the ability to be flexible when it comes to the hardware and items. Now the physical and virtual CSAs are going to be in a sense the same thing. They're the same web server. They'll have the same uh, CSA connections, adding more memory or cores or whatever the case is, does not increase the scalability of the CSA. Now, there is a bare minimum that the physical CSAs have, which is eight gigabytes of RAM and the four cores, which is what we recommend for your VMs. If you increase that on the VM though, it doesn't necessarily increase the throughput of the CSA, of the web server. Um, this is because of the type of web server it is. It's an in-house, it was built a while ago. And it just doesn't have the scalability that modern web servers have. That is something that you want to make sure that you understand and see. Again, the virtual CSA allows you to be able to multiply that a lot further and is going to be your best bet. If you have any questions though, when it comes to these items, please reach out to our support team. They'll be more than happy to help out. And that wraps up the physical CSA and virtual CSA portion. Uh, so again, we discussed um, allowing those connections, how those connections work, um, what is the best maximum connections for your environment, and it can be limited. Uh, looking out for those logs, making sure they're not filling up your disk space. And uh, talking about the remote control and specifically the different modes, whether it's gateway mode or direct mode, depending on where the end user is at. And again, the physical CSA. So much appreciated. Thanks for tuning in and have a good day.